Oh, that's interesting. So uh, what you're saying is it's sort of a competitor to Ethereum? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. EOS is like an operating system running on a multi-core processor. The main thing that EOS brings to the blockchain industry is actually parallelism, the ability to run multiple things at the same time. That gives us horizontal scalability. But from an end user's perspective, uh, what it means for you is that there's going to be more applications like Steemit available because developers will be able to build and deploy those applications cheaper. And they'll be able to integrate with each other. So you can have one account that you can use for your social media and your exchange and whatever other ideas that people come up with for running out of blockchain. EOS will be a platform to support decentralized apps. That is its core, and it's designed to be a very easy way for developers to create decentralized apps. So first, you might ask, what is a decentralized app? Well, the Ethereum name service is a very good example of a decentralized app. It allows you to buy various Ethereum-based domain names by interacting with this kind of app using smart contracts. You can perhaps bid on a name, then you can send various amounts of Ether for a bid, and now you're interacting with a decentralized computer. Well, that might be good for some apps such as the Ethereum name service. Let's take a look at another example of another type of decentralized app, which is Steemit. Steemit is actually at its very core a decentralized blogging network. It's a decentralized social network. Why I use this as an example is because Steemit is absolutely possible to be built on EOS. So you can actually build a whole blogging network on EOS. And the whole idea of EOS is to make the creation of such blogging network possible and easy to create without worrying about lots of code. That's the beauty behind it. And that's the beauty of this example as well, because the creator of EOS is also the co-creator of Steemit. There are a few things that I'm excited about that I'm going to be researching that I want to share with you guys, which is, you know, I've kind of like looked at EOS. They have an ICO, right? And they're trying to raise a huge amount of money. They gave out a lot of it in like the first week. Now they divvied out the rest of those tokens are going to be created over the course of the rest of the year. Every single day, there are a set number of tokens. They're going to be released to the people the investors who invested that day and it's not it's like uh it's like a, you if you invested 50 percent of the amount of ether that was donated that day then you get 50 percent of the tokens makes sense right so you have less people probably on a daily basis investing so you can think about it this way if i put in all of my money today what's going to happen over the next year because this is already trading on exchanges eos tokens and more and more tokens at the exchanges the value could go down people could also push the price up out of expectation and releases and things that they announce in news they expect the test network within uh two months and by the end of the year already have a working blockchain and everything developers are already developing for it and then releasing next summer every single step of the news we all know that pumps the price up in my opinion and what i see and what i've noticed is that eos will single hand Handedly have the highest market cap in cryptocurrency that could surpass even Bitcoin. Guys, you might know that Steemit is this uh, social network based on blockchain. And when users use Steemit, many of them don't even know that they, they use something based on the blockchain. They only care about the features, the unique features of Steemit. And so in order to go mainstream, in order to build decentralized applications that are really adopted, we need to build applications such that when people use them, they don't realize that these are decentralized applications. I think we need to talk about Dan Larimer, which is the person behind BitShares, Graphene and Steemit. And he's also the person behind EOS. When he developed these projects, he realized that many, many features that he had to implement in Steemit was exactly the same as in BitShares. So the whole idea of EOS is to bundle this functionality and release it to the public so that you and I can build decentralized applications such that Steemit, such that BitShares, where people can use our applications without having to download a, a blockchain on their computer. They, they can use it by only interacting with their website. Now, the reason I mentioned Dan Larimer is because he's actually done quite a few things in the crypto space. He came up with the original idea for the DAO. He also made bit shares and helped increase the scalability and came up with distributed proof of stake while working on bit shares. Then he worked on a project called Graphene. Uh, and then he also made Steam, which of course is a great social media platform 
that runs uh, entirely on the blockchain. But now he's working on something called EOS, which is what we're talking about today. And the big thing about EOS is that it is actually a competitor of Ethereum. What EOS is attempting to do is trying to bridge the gap between these decentralized apps and the blockchain. What they're doing is they're building out kind of like this middle section of code that will actually help developers create apps much easier. EOS introduces the first blockchain operating system. It provides every application with its own private database with multiple indices, sorted indices. It handles all the account permissions, account names, account recovery, so you don't have to worry about that. You can just think about what things you want your users to do and what permission level they require. We make it extremely flexible. We already have delegated proof of stake for electing the block producers for making decisions for the network. And block producers on all application on all blockchains have the ability to decide which transactions get included, which means they can censor transactions, which means they can freeze accounts. And this can be used to freeze broken accounts. So if something like the DAO happened, the account could be frozen until people could figure out what the proper software fix is. But instead of having to hard fork the entire network, the block producers have the power to collectively update a single contract, a single application, without impacting everyone else. It means you don't have to hard fork the network to fix a bug in one application. EOS. 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 And I trust what Dan has done, and so I trust he'll do it again.